Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're going to be talking about a Copper Volcano Tamer. This Copper Volcano Tamer, you guys can utilize for the other metal volcanoes as long as the temperature is around the same. Now, to get it started, what we're actually utilizing is the Auto Sweeper and Loader running the uh, Hot Copper on a rail system. And I'll show that to you guys right now. We have a rail system starting from the loader that loops in the bottom. And then comes back over to a temperature check where we re-loop it so that it goes through again. And once it's cool enough for this temperature sensor, we release it to the top. And the uh, top part right here where the steam turbine is is actually our cooling setup. But this is the uh, rail design to get it started. And the... Uh, Rail right here is a little bit finicky, so let's actually showcase that right now. So right here, what we have is a shutoff. And we'll showcase that right there to show you guys what we have. After this goes through, what we have behind it is a conveyor bridge. And then the pipeline goes like that. And then we put a loader in like so. So you can't really see the conveyor bridge, but that's how the pipeline looks like behind everything. And by doing it like this, this means that all the copper already on the line gets the priority to loop and everything inside the loader has to wait. This has to be done this way so that you don't get a jammed loop. Because if you have your loader be priority and the loop isn't, at some point, if you get too much copper on the rails, it's not going to rotate anymore and your build is stuck. So you need to set it up this way in order for it to not break. Now, with that, there's a couple things about the rail, and let's get started. It's going to be over the uh, metal overlay. So all of my rails are actually made out of iron. If you guys can't see it, this is iron or the conveyor rail. And these six tiles I made out of steel. And that's because of the uh, molten copper that spawned on this tile. Having that be steel means that there's no chance of the rail melting immediately on spawn. And I would recommend at minimum these four. I did these six to be more safe, but you do need at minimum these two to be steel as the copper does spawn on this tile. And if you put temp shift plates behind it, it makes it less likely as the hot molten energy is dispersed immediately. And let's get to that next. That's going to be the temp shift plates. So, temp shift plates, we have it on these two tiles, these two tiles, these two tiles, and these two tiles. Those temp shift plates are made out of diamond, and I would recommend using diamond for this as it is a great thermal... Uh, reactive agent and is something that also does not have to uh, worry about melting as the melting point is around 3000 celsius now of course this does mean that the auto sweeper and the loader itself have to be made out of steel that's because when you're auto sweeping the hot copper the thermal energy goes onto the sweeper for a split second and also on the loader as well as when you're putting items onto the rail the loader has to hold it if you sweep too much meaning that the loader properties does swing a lot so with that that means i also put the liquid vent on top for that same reason because if we have this holding a lot of uh, hot copper, there's a good chance that this overheats and may break. So we actually have the liquid vent spilling right on top of this so that it's always cooling it down. Now, that's going to be the bottom part. We also have an aqua tuner. This is really just to cool down the steam turbine. We'll show you that in a second. And over here, the conveyor shutoff that's also made out of steel, although it's not needed since it does not overheat. We have a automation setup, very simple. There's a straight line automation from the conveyor rail sensor. You do require this as you do want to see the temperature of the uh, copper before it leaves the system. And mine's is set to 175. So you could play around with the value for this. This is really up to you. Uh, in my build right here, my output temperature of copper is around 30 degrees Celsius. And because of that, depending on how hot you want it to be when it comes out or as if you want it to be cooler, you could set that a little bit lower if you want. Oh, it looks like we're about to get some rising pressure. So before we talk about the top part, let's actually see this in action. We're going to sweep the copper over here as well so that you could see the output of the fresh copper. And we'll watch the volcano do its thing. All right. Three, two, one. And let's go. The copper volcano is released now. As you can see, we're sweeping it immediately. 
we're going to look at the thermal temperature of the gas that is the steam now one thing is that i do have 30 kilograms per tile of steam in here uh adding more adding less actually has a effect on the build inside you never want it to be too less as if you have too less of a volume that means that it's easier for the temperature to spike up to a higher level you normally don't want this ever going over 200 degrees celsius so you play around with this understand that more steam per tile in kilograms that you have means that your output liquid that comes out from this is going to have a harder time chilling the steam so you, I would recommend if you can maintaining a 30 kilogram that's the balance I seem to have a good balance for now, for the most part, you can see that it's around 170, 180 degrees. We're cooling that down, uh, dripping it back in to cool down the liquid. The metal volcano right here, the copper volcano, is finished erupting for that one eruption period. And now we're waiting for the contents to chill. Oh, we're getting one of them uh, chilling down, one of them still pretty hot. And once we get one to below 175, you'll see it. Some of them are already released. This came out at 19 degrees. That's pretty cool. But that was because it was a small 150 gram tile. Once we get the 20 kilogram tiles out, it should be around 30 and bring up the average. There we go. Everything should be cool enough now. And that means everything's going to be coming out. So we have about 0.3 cycles amount of time for all of the copper to cool down. And looking at the temperature of all the copper, it is at 30 degrees, all 400 kilograms of it from that one eruption. So you could see that we extract the copper immediately so that it's usable at a cool enough temperature that it will not worry anyone when you're building something with a copper wire or a copper metal. Now let's get to the top. So the interesting thing about the build is how we actually get it cooled as low as possible, as fast as possible. We set it so that it's at 175. So how does this top part cool the copper to 30 degrees? So this part is interesting because this is probably the most finicky part about the build. So what we're actually doing to prevent the steam turbine from being flooded, because the steam turbine building does get flooded if you put too much liquid in here, and we work around that by stacking three separate liquids it doesn't matter which three liquids you select i would only recommend to not use salt water and brine on separate layers as or even the same layer as salt water and brine i would never recommend to use those since the density is so close the liquids flip-flop sometimes and will cause some issues with the densities and whatnot so i would recommend to not use uh both of those in the same but you could use just one of the two if you do need to use it because you lack the variety and another caveat is crude oil i will say this crude oil is the most finicky liquid when you pour crude oil you have a higher chance of flooding buildings with a lesser amount due to the crude oil properties and what that means is that if the steam turbine had the same amount of crude oil at the bottom level as the other two levels, you could see this is at 200 kilograms. This is uh, 260 kilograms per tile. This is only at 65, 67 kilograms. If I actually had this around 200, the steam turbine floods. And inherently, crude oil has a property where it floods all buildings faster. So you have to be a little bit careful around that. So I poured down, I believe it's one full bottle and then some, and it's around 60 kilograms. You could see that I'm not being flooded with this. Now, the second liquid I chose was salt water. You could use brine, polluted water if you guys want as well. And you want for the other two levels, if it's not crude oil, you want it between a range of 200 to 300 kilograms. Anything more than 300 kilograms has a high chance of flooding your turbine. And even if your game doesn't tell you it's flooded right away, if you go over, I think it's 400, it's a finicky number and it flip flops around. The next time you load the save file, your turbine, it's gonna have a flooded debuff on it. And that only happens on save load if you venture in barely over the threshold. 
So because of that, I do recommend anywhere between 200 and 300 kilograms. Ideally, you're going to want 200 kilograms per tile. I kind of dropped the ball here, but you know, the game kind of forgave me for that. So by having the stack liquids here, you could tell that we have a lot more volume per tile uh, versus something like hydrogen. Unless you were to make a infinite pressure hydrogen tank, the liquids are always going to be better. Not only that, the uh, SHC values of the liquids are also a lot better than the hydrogen gas in and of itself. So liquids have better stats, hold more volume per tile, and thus allow you to cool down the metal faster. So by having the aqua tuner run back here, you could see that our aqua tuner is set to 18 degrees and our medium is polluted water. We're running that through to cool down the steam turbine and to cool down the metal as it zigzags over the top as well. So you could see how this sensor is going to be what determines the output temperature of your copper as if you lower this lower, this is going to go down a couple of degrees as well because if this goes into the top box at a lower temp, it's gonna cool down more. So that's gonna be how we do the final cooling phase. And by having this only loop through once and having extremely cold temperatures in here, we drastically drop the temperature from 175 to 30 kilograms, or 30 Celsius. But that has been the Copper Volcano Tamer. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.